Hello everyone, welcome to another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung. This video is going to talk about a different alternate way of configuring Frame Relay. So in a previous video I showed you how to use GNS3 and the built-in Frame Relay switch icon there to easily make a Frame Relay network. In this video I'm going to show you how to do it by actually configuring the router to act like a frame relay switch. So a little bit more manual, but it does let you see how things are routed. It gives you a couple extra more commands. And basically you get to pretend to be the phone provider. So like a Verizon uh, GTE, well GTE no longer exists. So that would be Verizon, Sprint, that type of stuff. So normally when you're given a frame relay problem, you're given a topology in a Cisco press book or whatever book that looks something like this. You've got router one here, you've got router two there, you've got an IP address on your serial line, another IP address over there, and we have some DELSI numbers. So in our case, it's DELSI 102 from router one into the cloud. So this cloud here, if you didn't know, represents the telephone companies. Could be one company, could be multiple companies. You don't really know. And that's why in the cloud, we generally see dashed lines there because you don't really care inside of here would be frame relay switches which are actually routers configured to do frame relay switching and it's actually going to be very easy this is what we're going to be configuring right here the routers inside of here and then on the other side connecting from router 2 into the cloud is del c201 so we're going to emulate this inside of gns3 first of all we're going to open up gns3 we're going to see our node types right here we're going to pull in two routers so that's router 1 and router 2. These are going to be both sides of my cloud. I'm going to close that out. I'm going to zoom in a little bit by going up on the mouse wheel. And then we need to configure serial interfaces on these because by default these will have fast ethernet. So you can see the fast ethernet in slot 0. I'm going to go into WIC 0, give myself a uh, WIC 1T is fine. I only need one serial line, serial port. Go to R2, go into slots, WIC 0 again on router 2. I'm also going to click this icon here that says show interface labels. That's going to make things a little bit easier. And also I need to pop a router in there so I probably should not have closed my node types dock. I'm going to drag another router in the middle. Okay so remember in the books you see this as a cloud. When you're doing this in GNS3 the cloud is represented by another router. And we're going to change the host name on this and just call it frame in capital letters. So it's right there. Going to need to add in two serial ports. So go to configure frame slots WIC 0 and make it a WIC 2T. We're going to click OK. And we need two slots because one is going to connect to R1 and the other is going to connect to R2. Going to click on add a link. Click on that. Go to R1. It's going to be 000, go to frame, 000, and from frame 001 to R2, serial 00. And you can see here that because we have our show interface labels selected, we see these labels right here. If we didn't, it would be like that, blank, which makes things a little bit difficult. So we're going to get our labels back. We're also going to put some text here. You don't have to. But it just makes things a little bit easier to understand. So DELC 102 on R1 side and DELC 201 on R2 side. The DELC numbers don't have to be inverse, but in most textbooks you will see this inverse relationship 102, 201, 103, 301, that, that type of numbering scheme, just because it's easier to remember. You don't need to do local addresses. You don't need to um, put the same or you don't need to have different numbers on the links. These could actually be 102 and 102 if you wanted to uh, do it that way. Uh, it all will work the same. Okay, so now we're going to set this up. First of all, we are going to, it's probably easier to go on router, router 1. And before I do that, let me add in some IP addresses here. 1111. These are just labels that we are going to configure. So router 1 side is going to be that. Router 2 side is going to be dot two on the other side. All right, so now we're ready. I'm going to hit the green play button there on wonderful GNS3. By the way, I am running the newest, latest and greatest. It's starting, so it's going to it's going to suck a bit. 
it's going to slow down. I believe this is 0 0.7.4. Let's go to about 7.3. Okay, I'm, I'm behind a step, but that's all right. I'm going to click on open all my terminal windows, and they should already be booted up. Okay, that's R2. So we'll pull an R1. First of all, we are going to set up some basic stuff. Conf T, interface, serial, zero, zero. In cap frame relay. And let's set up IP address 1.1.1.1. And no shut. Some people would prefer to do this later after the frame relay switch is configured. Here it doesn't really matter. We're doing this for practice anyway, so we could kind of do this in whatever order. Go to router 2, conf t, interface, whoops, serial 00, zero in cap frame, and IP address 1.1.1.2. All right, so there we go. We're going to go into our frame re relay switch right here. And let me move my terminal window just about there. All right, so it's pretty easy. Go to Enable, Conf T. And a couple things we want to do. We want to actually go into the interface itself. So we want to go into Interface Serial 00. zero. We're going to do a command. We are, since we are pretending to be the we are pretending to be the telephone company, we are going to need to set a clock rate. Okay, so a clock rate, and that is because we're going to be giving this to the customer. We're going to kind of, you can kind of think of it as we are forcing a clock rate to the customer. Okay, so the easy way to do that is we go into interface, and we're going to say clock rate, and we do a question mark. Whoa. Oh, first we need to do in cap frame, sorry about that, in cap frame really. Then we should have clock rate, clock space rate, and then let's do uh, 5600, sounds pretty good. Let's see if we have that. 5600, 56,000, sorry about that. And then we need to set the frame relay interface type. Reason for that is one side is DTE, and one side is DCE. Okay. Generally, the customer side is going to be DTE, and we are considering we are configuring the phone company side, which is DCE, carrier or communication. However, you learned it in your book. So usually, I think of DCE as carrier side. So that's pretty easy. Frame relay INTF. Hit tab, and that's going to complete it. Funny thing here is if you do interface question mark, you're not going to get interface type. So this is actually a little gotcha there. So INTF, hit tab, and then DCE. Frame relay switching. Okay, so we forgot one step globally. Frame relay switching. So iOS is pretty helpful. Tells you what you need to set up. Now we go back to interface 000, frame relay interface type, DCE. There we go. Okay, after we've configured the interface type on the interface, we've done it to DCE, we're now going to configure frame relay route statements. Now, you would think that the route statements would be put on global config, but they're actually not. You have to go into the interface itself. And to show you that, if we type in frame relay right there, in global config, we get address, delist, switching, all that stuff. So no frame relay route allowed there. So we actually have to go to interface 000, pop into there. And now we are going to say frame relay, do a question mark. And you could see here, we do have a frame relay route statement right there. So frame relay route, question mark, input del C to be switched. So we are going to say 102 because 102 is going to be hitting us. Frame relay route 102 question mark, the word interface, and then what interface it's going to go out of. So we get it from 102, it hits our serial 00, and it's going to be chucked out of serial 01. So interface serial 0 slash 1, question mark, and then the Delsi that it's going to go out of. So we're going to say 
The exit del C right here is 201. So that is going to be 201. Okay, after we've configured serial 00, we're going to step over to serial 01, serial 01. And basically this is the mirror image of the other side. So we're going to do in cap frame relay. Going to do a clock rate of 56,000. We're also going to do frame relay interface type. Remember this is abbreviated, so INTF and going to set this side to DCE as well. Finally, we're going to add our frame relay route statements. And on this side, it's going to be incoming of del C201. So frame relay route 201, the word interface, is going out 0, 0, 0. Let's verify that, 0, 0, 0 right there. And then the del C for that side is 102. And we'll hit enter right there. All right, so that works out. We're going to show frame route. And you can see here frame rate, show frame route shows us our serial number, our serial interfaces, input del C's, output interfaces, output del C. You can see they're inactive because no one is connecting to them just yet. Okay, let's go back to router one. Or actually, we'll go back we have forgotten to do something very important. And this is going to get you sometimes. And that is to turn the darn interfaces on. So we're going to go into, yep, they're a shutdown. So that kind of makes sense. Conf T, interface serial 00, no shut. Interface serial 01, no shut. Exit out of there. Let's go over to router 2. Router 2, you can see our line protocol has come up. Show IP and BR. And let's see if we can ping the other side. Probably not because frame relay is kind of slow. So a couple configuration steps or a couple verification steps and troubleshooting steps we can do. Oh, we got a success. So we can, I'll show you a couple of troubleshooting steps. Show frame LMI. This shows that we are getting LMI. You can think of them as keep alive information messages coming from the frame relay switch. And you can see here we have, let's see, some statistics sent and received. We got four, so this is pretty good. LMI type Cisco, show frame PVC. This will show us our DELC numbers. Let's see DELC and it is active, so it's pretty good. So this is what you're looking for. You're looking for active. And we did get a ping from the other side, ping 1112, or that's me, 1111. And I have a ping from the other side, which is pretty nice. Let's go over to router one. Router one, show frame LMI. We have some messages received, so that's good. Show frame PVC. And we have del C number 102 right there. And this, we are getting these DELC numbers. If I show you, run here, you can see that we don't have any frame relay or frame map statements configured. All we have is encapsulation frame relay. That's it in an IP address. So where are we, how are we getting this DELC? It's called inverse ARP. We are learning it automatically. And that's actually going to be another video, but in, the, in our configuration right here, we are learning the DELC automatically. We could also statically map it, but that's going to be for another video. So just to recap, this is pretty easy. We have manually configured a frame relay switch, which is actually a router. And all we did on the router is a couple things. Show run. A couple simple things. We actually have to turn on frame relay switching right there, frame relay switching. Your router will scream at you if you try to do the frame relay route statements if you don't do that. We've set up our interfaces, set the clock rate, in cap frame relay, we've got a clock rate. We have to remember to set the frame relay interface type to DCE, frame relay route. Remember, it is the incoming DELC, which is 102, exiting interface, and the exiting DELC. So it's very simple. This side goes to that side, and on the other interface, it's that side, right side goes to left side. 
And then just make sure your routers on each end have their interfaces config, uh, configured correctly. So show run interface 000. And you can see there, all we have is in cap frame relay. This clock rate here is what Cisco puts on there. Okay, so you, do, you don't need to configure this clock rate. Normally Cisco will put a default clock rate on everything. All right, that's basic frame relay configuration, configuring your frame relay switch manually. Thanks for watching.